The first one, can you drive in Canada with your foreign driver's license? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can, you can. If you buy a car and it's five thousand dollars or below, mm. you don't pay tax on the car. So what's the standard mileage that you think that okay. someone should get? It's one good thing about Facebook market is that if you don't find the car that you want today, subsequent days they'll be updating you that oh, this new set of cars have come. Mm. People have posted and people keep posting every day. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yemisi. Today I have a guest. He would introduce himself quickly. But based on requests, we're going to be discussing how to buy cars or how to buy a car in Canada and uh, driving eligibility and all of those things that relate to driving in Canada. So you guys know that I do not drive yet. So I decided to bring someone that is well versed um, so that he can explain to us how to do this. See, I've been looking for this guy to be on this video for the longest time. And again, he's Ghanaian. Anyway, we'll introduce yeah. himself. He's Ghanaian. And for those people that have been asking me to bring a Ghanaian on board so that they can ask questions, please mention it in the comment section so that I will come back and you will answer all of your questions. And without further ado, let him introduce himself. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm Isaac, uh, Yemisi's friend. She wanted me to talk to you guys about buying a car in Canada. That's why I am here. Yeah. Do you want to deep dive a little bit? What did you study here in Canada? Oh, okay. So I think you guys already know what Yemisi studied we used to be in the same class yeah. for some of the class and uh during our internship wait masters of public administration oh yeah sorry masters of public administration at the university of saskatchewan yeah. during our internship we happened to be in the same office yeah so same ministry. same ministry same office but then different divisions yeah so you guys asked so many questions so people have dm'd me and i was thinking that we should start first from eligibility in canada like driving eligibility so i'm going to just spell out some questions that you guys already dropped and we can answer them quickly before we we'll go into the real tea which is how to purchase a car in canada i'm going to be posting some questions to you so the okay. first thing <laughs> no and i can answer some as well because even though i don't drive i still like i'm knowledgeable no oh, i'm still i still have knowledge of some okay of these things. okay so the first one can you drive in canada with your foreign driver's license yeah 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 you yeah. can you can yeah and especially if you get the idp which is the international driving permits you can yeah, drive in yeah, canada yeah, yeah. but i also know that if you are a student you can drive throughout the period of your study until mm -hmm. 90 days true. after your program that's true then for permanent resident that one's a little bit dicey i used to think that you can drive for just 90 days and then you you are mandated to take like take your, your provincial, provincial driver's yeah. test but some will also tell you if you have it the idp that's international driver's permit you can always drive oh anyway so okay. yeah that's okay. it but basically i mean when you come here as a permanent resident just try to quickly get your driver's permit so that you you even take that out of the way yeah that's true what do you do if you never had a license in your home country uh well that one um I think it's <laughs> my it's, fellow people. It depends on the the province. Yeah. So, um, speaking from the Saskatchewan perspective, mm -hmm. uh, you have to get the learner's driver's license, and then you have to wait for nine months. Is it nine months? Yeah, nine yeah, months. Nine months before you can take the actual road, road test. test, and then you get your class five, and then the class five, you get um, class five novice. Novice, yeah, you get yeah. the class five novice, and then after one year, then you get the full. Class five. Yeah, yeah. So you get a no after you get a novice one, and then you get the full class five. So they they have restrictions. They have restrictions mm -hmm. with the novice one. I think you can only pick a family member, or you can just do one passenger, mm -hmm. and then the novice, the the novice two, you can do three people. I. It depends, yeah, it though. Depends, like, yeah. and it also depends on your province. So that's another thing that I wanted to draw out whatever we are saying now we'll try to make it generic as to like canada wide yeah. but most of them will be specific to saskatchewan because that's where yeah, that's we really, currently that's live what we're the most experiencing and another thing that i wanted to draw out from what you said if you're trying to go through the driving process once you have that novice like a learner license after the knowledge test you can only use a car if there is a class five experienced person yeah. in the car yeah that is when you have the learners yeah you have to always have a experienced class five yeah. person sitting next to you not yeah. a novice one the, the oh, sorry <laughs> the, oh the the, yeah the experienced experience. class five person <laughs> yeah and then another thing is in saskatchewan i know that you must write the basic test mm -hmm. that's that written test yeah. usually you just walk in you don't have to book ahead yeah. and you pay 25 dollars um then afterwards you now book for six by six that six by six is the six hours on yeah. time 
six, six hours, hours road practice yeah. from when you get that novice license when you pass your test for mm -hmm. sure and in that test, they test your road sign ability and then some other scenario questions, yeah. right? On the written, the written exam, test, yeah. yeah. Nine months after you do the actual road test, but within that time, of course, you have to start practicing. That's for it. true. And the road test is $55 in Saskatchewan. It can vary in other provinces. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another thing is, do people fail this road test? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I know <laughs> somebody who failed like four times. Yeah. And another thing that I even realized when I was doing my research was in Saskatchewan, last year we had 55% pass rates, like first time pass rates, oh, yeah. and 45% fail rates. So yes, people fail their tests, and that's why you see people rejoicing online yeah. when they eventually when pass they their tests. Well, I, I happen to be one of the people, not to brag, that was, but I got that it on my first one. drive. Oh really? Nice. Yeah. Ah, maybe you should come out. <laughs> also, there is a number of points that you would fail that makes you ineligible, like that makes you to try again. Yeah. In Saskatchewan, once you fail 10 or more points, then you will, you will not pass the test. Mm -hmm. So that 10 or more points does it mean as they are testing you like oh parallel parking and all of that they are already deducting points where but when they see that you are not doing it correctly yeah yeah so they they add mm -hmm. so let's say when you are uh, driving and then you make a mistake let's say you stop after the line oh let's say that's is two points Ooh. and then if you do parallel parking and you do it wrongly two points but there are some that when you when you make that mistake you like it's automatic disqualification when you over speed when you exceed the speed limit mm. in a school like the speed limit at a school is 30, 30. Yeah. but when you go beyond 30 that's it like yeah. you, you automatically fail that's oh. my that's 10 every mistake accumulates to 10 mm. then you have to take it again i think six or ten you have, you have the pass mark is six ah uh, i think it's six but then when you get eight then you have to take it again oh okay so that's how they usually deduct those points right mm -hmm. okay and i think we already touched on the next one a bit um what will you be tested on oh yeah like let me see started you'll be tested on your awareness of pedestrians yeah and then you also be tested on how you parallel pack mm -hmm. knowing the lanes that you have to follow where to stop and the speed limit yeah those are some of the basic stuff mm -hmm. and that is what you need for your basic driving mm -hmm. to survive changing lanes yeah changing lanes yeah, indicating shoulder checking like shoulder checking oh my is God. like <laughs> a major thing that you have to know yeah. how to do because i think uh, most of the people well, from ghana or and i think in nigeria they don't do shoulder checking because shoulder checking if you look in your side mirror that is it, you're good but here you have to do shoulder checking and when i came it was weird for me because doing shoulder checking i felt like i would crash the car but then mm. as you drive you get used to it and then you know that oh okay you see that it's very it's very useful it's very mm. useful so. and do you want to just show us what that shoulder checking should is? I, well i'm not in the car right now yeah. but shoulder checking is when you look at the passenger side mm -hmm. the window mm -hmm. you look out is the window degree or 180 degree again? Uh, four o'clock <laughs> so <laughs> when you look at your four o'clock okay. outside the passenger window mm -hmm. then you see that there's no car by you then you can change switch lane or mm -hmm. the same thing look at the left seven o'clock yeah but then they also say that you have to, sometimes you have to do 180 like total like back oh mm -hmm. I, I don't know about that one okay anyway just know that those are some of the things that you'll be yeah, tested basic on stuff. what are the driving tests like i said in saskatchewan is different because i know that in ontario my friend was talking about um after writing knowledge test then they have one ontario license i, I can't remember right now mm -hmm. if i remember i'll put it on the screen but anyway in saskatchewan it's a bit different all you need to do is to write your knowledge test it's usually a written test and like i said it's it tests your and then you do a vision test too yeah you do a vision test oh how did this in my book mm -hmm. yeah you do a vision test if you do a knowledge test in the knowledge test it tests different scenario your something. knowledge about knowledge about like driving driving and road science tests, and road stuff. science ah that road science <laughs> anyway well <laughs> oh, you've done your, your yeah i did it yeah did so it. he's a certified class seven <laughs> another thing that i wanted us to just touch on briefly is car insurance in canada like we're not going deep deep down but just basically knowing that it is illegal in canada to drive without a insurance. car insurance like yeah. straight up no straight <laughs> it's up, just no. like you know having a driver's license yeah that's the like it's illegal you you can't just be driving without insurance yeah 
you'll be in trouble yeah and if you regularly drive a car in canada that belongs to a relative or a friend you must make sure that you are listed in that car insurance plan that's also something i saw on immigration website so yes. preaching. so that's everything that i know and now ah. we are going to <laughs> okay. the main gist of the day which is like car buying in canada so let us allow the expert to ah. and no. we'll listen I'm no expert, but I just want to share my little knowledge about buying a car. I would also be asking some questions if I feel like maybe some of yeah. those things are saying has questions. Oh, yeah. Basically, when you're trying to buy a car, just as you make any major decision in life, you plan. Planning entails like checking the kind of car you want, mm -hmm. checking the fuel economy of the car, if it's reliable. Because mm. some people just think about okay i want to get this brand of car and then they don't even think if it's going to be reliable as in the, the purpose that you're using the car for so maybe you want to get a car to help you be able to go to From work point a to b, point a to point b mm -hmm. get to work fast and all those things is a car reliable is a car going to help you mm -hmm. do all those things finding a car mm -hmm. so this is where some people have different perspectives some friends of mine they go to facebook market to look for cars some also go to the dealership mm. people think that facebook market is cheaper because you see cars there and then it's cheap and then dealership to you have to finance mm. like either you finance or you pay everything up front yeah so you also have to determine where you want to get your car from with facebook market speaking from saskatchewan perspective if you buy a car and it's five thousand dollars or below you don't pay tax on the car oh yes but then if you buy a car that is six thousand dollars above you pay tax on the car so when you go to a dealership and let's say the car is eight thousand dollars you pay the tax on the car mm -hmm. so you pay tax on eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars if you buy it from an individual like on facebook market you only pay for the price of the car but then when you go to sgi to register the car you pay for that tax oh. on the eight thousand dollars at sgi sgi is strictly for saskatchewan yeah sorry SGI is strictly for saskatchewan yeah. saskatchewan government government yes yeah, saskatchewan government insurance yeah. Yeah, that's it you get that the price mm -hmm. and then you go to the dealership or you go to the facebook marketplace talking about facebook marketplace you can go to facebook marketplace and people just like okay i want to buy this car they just search for the car they want some find a car a friend of mine was telling me about his experience he goes to facebook market browses through the list of cars he wants they have Mm -hmm. and then he later decides that okay maybe i want this brand of car so he searches for the car and then one good thing about facebook market is that if you don't find the car that you want today subsequent days they'll be updating you that oh, this new set of cars have come mm -hmm. people have posted and people keep posting every day so facebook market is a good place that you can get a car mm -hmm. and then dealership that one if you have the money so dealership is just basically like a store where they yeah sell that's for where they sell cars mm -hmm. when you get a car you have to test drive it sorry before you go to okay. testing regarding mileage mm -hmm. you know a lot of times people will tell you don't buy a car that has this number of mileage yeah. and above so what's the standard mileage that you think that okay. someone should get yes i knew there would be a question like that so i, I prepare for it okay. there's no standard mm -hmm. for the mileage that you need to have on your car and then preferably people want to get um cars with lower mileage and that is that is good like mm -hmm. it is very advisable to get a car with a low mileage getting a car with a higher mileage does not necessarily mean that the car is not good some brand of cars i don't want to mention brand names over here but when they get the higher mileage you start having faults but there are also some brands that when they get you have higher mileage mm. they are good like you're still good to go one of my roommates uh, bought one car from 2002 i don't want to mention the brand and then I was we were all laughing at him like why would you buy this car the mileage was around 321k but when you drive the car you feel that like the car has balance like the car is is very good mm. right just that it looks old and all those things but yeah. the car is very good yeah. that car with a higher mileage would be better than you driving another car brand mm. that has yeah. slightly lower mileage than that one mm. it will give you troubles mm. so drawing from that when you when you're buying a car you don't necessarily buy a car because it's cheap you have to consider some things like um, mileage. the mileage and then like i said earlier on the reliability the fuel there's mm -hmm. this person that i know who bought a car for thousand dollars oh 
So you think that, oh, $1,000. You think that, oh, yeah, the car is cheap and everything. But it's a saloon car, but then the engine was like V6. So the fuel consumption of that car was eating the person up. Mm. So although the person got a cheap car for a cheaper price, mm. the fuel was, you know, drawing all the income that the person had, was getting. I think that says a lot for the mileage, right? Yeah. Test and inspection when you see the car that you want. Uh, and the one thing I want to say, when you go into a dealership, don't go with an open mindset that, okay, any car that I see, at least have a, a car in mind mm. or a brand in mind that yeah. you want to, because they, are, they can sweet talk you into doing a lot of things. See the car you want, mm. call the person up on, you contact the person on Facebook market, mm. or you go to the dealership, you have to test the car. And then it's a good thing, they give you the chance to test the car. You sit in the car, you drive the car around for a bit, and then you see that, okay, I'm hearing this sound. What is this sound? Then they tell you that, oh, it's this and that. So you drive, you test the car, if it's what you want, you feel it. Like you you sit in the car, drive around, and then you be like, okay, I like I like the groove of the car. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this car. Buying on Facebook market, you negotiate the price. But I don't know if you can negotiate to pay half, now half later. That one depends on you and the person. Or when you go to a dealership, there's a chance for you to do financing. So either you do a down payment, then they'll share the remaining cost yeah. over the years, yeah. over some over 24 months, or depending on how much you, you want to pay a month. But what's the standard months that you usually share for? Is it uh, the 24, 36? 24, 24, 36. Yeah, I don't mm. think there's a standard month. So 24, 36, so that's like two years, two years or, or three, three years. years. Then you make a down payment. If you want to make a down payment, you can make a down payment and then it'll do that one for you. Yeah. And if you don't want to make a down payment, you don't have money for down payment, you can do the zero down payment and then they'll give you the car and mm -hmm. then you start paying mm -hmm. as the months go by so mm -hmm. that means that you have a larger amount of monthly payment that you'd have to do if you go for the zero down payment you so, have a question okay now that you're in canada mm -hmm. what would you advise someone to do would you advise that the person purchases the car outrightly or would you advise that the person should do financing? well well and would you also advise that the person goes for something big, big, or the person should just tone it down as a new immigrant? Okay. Well, talking about all these things, mm. it's preference actually. Preference. Mm. I know somebody who wants his first car to be his luxury car, mm. so the person saving towards buying the yeah the luxury car. Yeah. So you can either decide that okay, I want to pay everything up front. Mm. If you have the money, well, that is ideal because that's how the economy is set up. That the mm -hmm. African economy is set up. Like yeah. you just pay everything up front. Mm -hmm. So if you can pay everything up front, that is good. If you can't pay everything up front, you decide what what can my strength carry. Maybe I can pay X amount of dollars, pay the rest over the months. Uh, getting the car. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I'm cutting short. As someone that is just coming into Canada, what do you need credit score to get a financing? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you need to have standing. good credit standing. Yeah. yeah. I think they will take some documents from you mm -hmm. as the, they do, the what? Like, is it bank your credit account? Okay, so the dealership that I witnessed, the person bought that, okay, I work here, mm. put them the appointment letter and show them the amount that he gets. They're like, okay, so how much do you want us to deduct? So they were deducting. From, and then he bought his Ford check, I think. Like they set up everything like he's going to apply for a job. So he oh. showed them that this is what I do. Mm. This is how much I earn. Mm -hmm. So I am good for their money. Okay. So they they did that uh, contract, went to the office, signed everything. He got the car. Okay. So have I answered your question? Yeah. I think I have a follow-up question. Okay. But I'm trying Ask to think phone. about it in my head. Because I see that a lot of immigrants just buy outright. Mm-hmm. So is it because of that credit score issue slash they don't have a job offer yet? That's why they just tilt towards you outright know, purchase. Out, outright purchase, like from my experience, a lot of people tilt towards outright purchase are getting cheaper cars. Cars yeah. are at a cheaper prices. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting a car at a cheaper price, most likely you're getting it on Facebook market. Mm -hmm. And if you're buying from an individual on Facebook market, the person is not going to do financing with you. The person needs their money. Right? Yes. yes. <laughs> like what you're saying. That's why I was saying that Facebook market, you see the person you can negotiate, but when you go to a dealership, there's some restrictions to how you can negotiate. Yeah. Test the car. So when you see that, okay, you're good with the car that you, that's the car that you want, then preparing to drive the car. You have to go and register the car. By registration, getting a number plate, because every person that owns the car has a number plate. Mm. So that when you're doing anything mm. illegal and the police can your number plate, you know that, okay, this car belongs to 
this person. Yeah. This guy belongs to UMC or mm-hmm. this guy belongs to Isaac. Yeah. And I know, also know that it's illegal for something to cover your yeah your plate. Okay. Your plate has, always has to be visible, visible. even when the street lights are off and then the cop sees it he's going to stop you and tell you that your plate light up off hmm. get it fixed this will take me to my next topic for discussion hmm. if it is inside the province you just register the car and then they'll check if the car has been in an accident before by using the vin number hmm. sorry the vin vin as in v-i-n very quiet identification number yeah so you check and then after that they'll just give you the number plate and then you would have to fix it yourself so you fix the number plates on yeah. the car and then you do your insurance like mm. you said do your insurance you have a question yeah i wanted to i'm sorry to interrupt you but you were saying something about if it is within the province are you referring to if you buy the car within the province yeah once you get the car what are those costs that you start incurring per month on the car it depends like you're saying insurance so the insurance mm. you can either decide to pay it upfront mm-hmm. or share it over the months oh okay Personally, I have mine shared over the months because it's a lot. <laughs> it's a year, mm-hmm. every year. Maybe it's from January, depending on when you did it, from January to December. Mm-hmm. And then January, they'll send you a letter that you have to renew or give them the go ahead to continue doing their monthly yeah. deduction. My monthly deduction might be different from MEC's monthly deduction when she buys a car. And is this subject to the kind of model you buy? Uh, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it is. Insurance is infused in the plate. That is why you need a number plate. So automatically getting a number plate means you've insured the car. That's why some people say it's renewal of the number plate monthly. Mm. So insurance is the number plate. Okay. So I mentioned earlier on that if you buy the car in the province, you do your registration and you're good. Mm. But if you buy the car outside the province and then you bring it into your province, there's that inter provincial check because what will pass as a roadworthy car in this province might be different from another province oh. getting a car in a different province the cars that you can get in this province i would say they are slightly priced higher here in saskatchewan, here in saskatchewan. Oh. but there are some provinces that you can get cars for cheaper i know someone that well, i always know someone <laughs> it's not me i know someone so i know someone that got a car from a different province brought the car to this province he had to go through inspection mm-hmm. And when the person went through inspection, it cost him like 1200 for the inspection because they said that, okay, there's this thing that is wrong with the car, mm-hmm. so you need to fix it. If you don't fix it, then you can't drive the car. You, mm-hmm. you don't get your license stroke insurance. Mm-hmm. If you fix it, then you can drive the car. If you can't, if you can't drive the car, that means you, either you have to sell it or mm-hmm. you've just yeah. incurred loss. That is one disadvantage. The, the advantage is that the car will be cheap in that province but then driving the car from that province to your province and doing the, all the inspections and all those things can increase the cost for you so it's up to you to check the 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 price of the car like check the cost benefit check the cost benefit like you weigh the good and the bad mm. and then because one and another disadvantage is that if you go buy the car over there and then you bring it in there's a problem are you going to take it back or mm. So you have to weigh all these yeah. things before you decide to purchase the car. Mm, yeah. That is the interprovincial thing. You can drive around for mm. a while. Like let's say you move from a different province mm-hmm. and you come and visit somebody. They don't expect you to just change your number plate. But if you're bringing the car here to use the car mm. here, then you have to change your number plate. Even when you move from a different province to another province, you have to change your driver's license. And then when you take your driver's license, your old like let's say I move from here to Alberta. Alberta. I'll take my Saskatchewan license and take it to Alberta and then Alberta mm-hmm. SDI yeah. or Alberta's car people yeah. will take my Saskatchewan driver's license, cut it in, into pieces or like destroy it and then give me the equivalent of oh. the Saskatchewan driver's license okay. here. So that you that insurance have. that counting over yeah. there. With Alberta they have private insurance. Like oh. you see Saskatchewan the, the government does it's the, the insurance but in Alberta private companies do the insurance yeah and that's why we say some things vary between province to province finally i'll just talk about leasing the car leasing the car is when you get the car but you've not actually bought it so you're not paying for the car but then you're paying for the depreciation that is going to come on the car as you drive it it's different from financing financing when you finish paying mm-hmm. you get 
the car you own the car but leasing you just pay for the depreciation of the car so financing you're paying for the value of the car and then you're going to get a car after you finish financing and leasing you're not paying for the value of the car you're just paying for the depreciation that comes on the car which means you never really own the car which means you never really own the car but then one advantage of the leasing is that after that you can move to a different car people move to the latest models because it costs less to lease a car mm. than to finance a car because the monthly payment that you pay on leasing a car is lower than financing a car because financing a car you're buying the actual value of the car but leasing just paying for the depreciation and then there's low cost in repair where you're leasing the car when there's any faults you take it to them they repair it for you so that's some of the basic stuff that i'm going to talk about today and i hope i answer some of your questions if you don't understand anything you can put it in the comment section below i've always wanted to do this when every time i watch youtube <laughs> i YouTube. watch youtube videos like put in the comment section below yeah yeah so you can put in the comment section below i try as much as possible to answer your questions and if maybe i said something and it's contradicting to something that you already know you can also let me know because we are learning right so yeah also if you are living in a different province we we'll appreciate you sharing the knowledge from your provincial perspective yeah. in the comment section as well because we help a lot of people not everybody is coming to our province and yes. i'm pretty sure we did not touch on like everything canada, everything -wide. canada wide so we really appreciate that like you said let us know the questions you have in the comment section he'll be there to reply or to she, respond she'll be there to respond and i'll be there to like attack him too. <laughs> there is a q a that is currently going on um i don't know if this video will be coming out before then but anyway there's a q a that is currently going on in the community tab so go over there and drop your questions so that i can answer them i might as well just do it with a couple of friends so that everybody shares their perspective because i know you guys like this kind of videos don't forget to like share and subscribe and we'll see you guys in our next one. Oh no Ooh. i'll see you guys in my next one no, we'll see you guys in our next one because <laughs> i'm here to stay oh I'm nice just i'm just kidding my Ghanaian audience please spam the comment section with your questions okay. and i'll be able to bring him back to answer all of your questions yes. okay thank you guys for watching you i'll guys. see you guys in my next one bye guys bye guys <laughs>